I'm Madison Harper and today's topic is So Long Success Strippers and Goodbye Negative People. I want to share a conversation I had with you recently. It was at a party and I was talking about an upcoming trip I was taking to LA. And the person I was talking to said to me, why do you love LA so much? And I said, well, you know, it's a place full of dreams and a lot of creativity. And they're also very much into personal development. And that is what I do now. I write books and do talks on self-improvement. And she actually looked at me and said, you know what, if they spent less time reading self-improvement books and more time educating themselves, they'd actually be a lot less dumb. Now, you can imagine, I was shocked by this comment because it is wicked on so many levels. First of all, she's insulted the whole state of California and she hasn't even visited it. But secondly, she's also insulted what I do for a living. And she's a perfect example of people who love to push you down instead of pull you up. So how do you know if you've been hit by a success stripper or negative person? Well, sometimes you don't even know because it's just the norm and you're so used to it. I want to tell you about a friend of mine who used to start every morning having coffee in the same place with the same group of guys. And he's an entrepreneur and he'd often share his dreams and his ideas and the projects he was working on. And they'd be saying, oh, you'll never do it. That'll never work. Why don't you just get a full-time job? he was telling me about these conversations and I was saying, can you not see that you are starting your morning with this negative fodder from these people every single day? And he was wondering why he was starting to get down on what he was doing and it's no wonder. When you're with success strippers, you often feel a bit hurt or angry or get that, I wish I'd said that after you'd left. And you also feel like you're continually defending your dreams, your lifestyles, your goals. And you often leave situations feeling annoyed and deflated and upset and you kind of dread getting together with these people. So what types of success strippers and negative people are there out there? Well, first of all, the most obvious is blatant Bob. He's the guy who says you can't do it. It'll never work. You know, you need more money than that. You don't have enough education. So he's actually really easy to identify and deal with. But there are two other types of people who are less obvious but far more lethal. First of all, there is the I'm only being helpful Helen. She's the one who says, if I don't tell you, nobody else will. And what Helen's got to understand is that it's actually your journey. And her advice on your journey may not be the best solution for you and we can't say what works for us works for someone else because it's all about perspective the next thing we have is sideways Steve and he leads with a positive but leaves you with a negative he's the guy who says oh I love the name of your book but who's gonna write it for you in other words great book title but you're too dumb to put two words together to author it or what a great idea but how are you going to fund it considering you're so far in debt I mean, this is soul-destroying stuff. But what you've got to do is ignore them and rethink the situation and think, you know what, my great idea is not going to get me into debt, it's going to get me out of debt. So how do you manage success strippers? Well, the first thing you've really got to do is cull them from your life. And you've got to admit, they bug you anyway. You come away frustrated and angry and have all these emotions you don't really need in your day-to-day -day life. And who really does want to have those interactions? But you might be saying, oh, but there's a lot of great things about this person. Well, that may be true, but you've got to consider, unless 98% of your interactions with them are fantastic, fulfilling, and make you happy, they're an energy drain. They've got to go. The next thing, I know you can't always call people out of your life, but you can minimize the time you spend with them and what you tell them. Because you can't really choose your family or your colleagues. I mean, that's just the way it is. But you don't have to share all your dreams and goals with them. And sometimes that feels a bit inauthentic. That when, you know, when you're having conversations, you might be talking just about the children or the weather or what was on TV last night and not what truly matters to you. But you know, I've got to tell you, you really can't have a truly authentic relationship with somebody when they're coming from ego. And when these people are constantly putting you down, that's exactly what's happening. The next thing you need to do to deal with success strippers and negative people is don't justify yourself. You don't have to defend your lifestyle and your beliefs and your goals and your dreams. And also, it's not an argument. It's simply, you know, your perspective and their perspective. And when you put that as a versus, your perspective versus their perspective, no one is going to win anyway. The next thing you might want to do is ask yourself, why does it bother me so much when they say these things to me? Well, you know, first of all, they're not very nice things, but also... 
it's a case of them reflecting back your fears that have been playing in your head. And it kind of freaks us out a little bit. I mean, we think it's the evidence is out there now. They've said it, oh, it must be true. And it kind of makes us feel a little bit wobbly. So simply acknowledge the fear that it is a fear and reframe it. Don't think, oh, I don't have enough education. Think I have all the skills and knowledge that I need and I'll learn more as I go along my path. The next thing you might want to do is detach from their comments because their negativity is more about them than it is about you. When they say, you know, you can't do it, it's because they can't do it. And when I actually revamped my career from being a strategic marketer and business person and started doing writing and speaking, people would say to me, why, who would want to do that? 500 people you're standing up in front of, you could make a fool of yourself. To them it was fear, but to me it's actually bliss. The next thing you need to do is set boundaries with these people. You know, if they're saying something negative to you, you can, you know, respond by saying, you know, that's an interesting comment, but in future I'd appreciate it if you weren't so negative towards my ideas and dreams. Now this might seem, oh, a little harsh and out there, but you think about it, they're not censoring themselves when they're talking to you and putting you down. Plus, if you don't say anything, it's just like saying, well, you can do it to me over and over again because you've got to set the boundary. Otherwise, it'll just keep reoccurring. And also, you need to set boundaries with these people because you're not there to make them feel good by putting you down. Okay, what happens if you're on the other side of the coin and you're the success stripper or negative person? Well, first thing you've got to do is quit it because there are things in all of our lives that we can't appreciate in other people's lives because it's not to our taste. A recent example is my girlfriend just refurbished her home and she put out all this beautiful modern wood-looking furniture. And I mean, I'm not a wood furniture type of girl, but I could totally appreciate what she'd done. And it was beautiful. It just wasn't for me. So there was no need for me to put it down, but I could appreciate the effort and the beauty that she had created within her home. The next thing I want to, you to ask yourself, you know, what in me wants to put people down? You know, is it my own insecurity or my own unhappiness? For whatever the reason, there is absolutely no excuses for belittling and giving your negative opinions to others. And also, you probably think, well, can I express my own opinion? I mean, it's for their own good. If I don't tell them, nobody else will. I mean, sure, you can express your opinion, but do it in the right way. Instead of saying, I hate dogs, say something like, you know, dogs and I don't click. Can you see the difference? One is filled with, you know, passionate dislike, and the other is just, you know, it just doesn't work for me. There's a total difference. And you can still get your point across without offending or upsetting anybody. And by the way, I love dogs. But the point is, you can be kind in your opinion. I want you to create a happy and fulfilled life, and that means letting go of those success strippers and negative people in your life. Instead, surround yourself with people who really support you and your dreams. I'm Madison Harper, and here's to your success.